Uh, the second method of uh, demodulating an FM signal is discussed in this video. So this method is based on differentiation. So we'll use, we'll see how a differentiator can be used to demodulate an FM signal. So uh, we know that the information in an FM signal resides in the instantaneous frequency omega i, uh, which is equal to the carrier frequency plus the deviation that is based upon or that depends upon the baseband signal MT. Uh, KF is the multiplying factor of the FM uh, modulation. So we, if we use a frequency selective network that has a transfer function of this form, where uh, the transfer function is equal to 2a pi, these are the constant terms depending upon the circuit parameters. F is the frequency of the signal, the input signal, and B is again another constant which represents a straight line relationship between frequency and the output over the FM band would yield an output that is proportional to the instantaneous frequency. So in this case, we can see the output is proportional to the instantaneous frequency. If we can get this sort of a transfer function, we can use it to demodulate an FM signal. So variations in the instantaneous frequency must be slow in comparison to the time constant of this network. So this the network which has this transfer function, it should have a time constant, which is uh, much larger than the omega i. So in other words, omega i, the instantaneous frequency variations must be slow compared to the time constant of this circuit. Uh, the simplest circuit to achieve this is an ideal differentiator. So we know that the transfer function of a differentiator is simply uh, j omega. Uh, if you remember from the differentiation property, if we have time differentiation, uh, the Fourier transform means that we just need to multiply j omega with the, uh, the, the undifferentiated Fourier transform. So uh, this is the differentiation property of the Fourier transform. So from that, we can see it's also j omega is equal to j two pi f. Uh, so if we have a transfer function like this, we can use it to demodulate an FM signal. So this plot shows the dependence of the y-axis, which is the output on the, which is the output, we can say amplitude variations, uh, the, and they, they are dependent upon the frequency variation. So with the change in frequency, the amplitude output changes linearly so this this relationship must be linear uh, if there's any non-linearity then the output uh, variation the uh, variations in the output amplitude will not be exactly proportional to the input frequency and there would be some distortion in the uh, generated uh, or the demodulated signal so now let's see let's look at an fm signal uh, let's say we apply we give this signal as an input to a circuit which has a response, a linear response within a certain range of uh, frequencies. That range of frequency should be the band of the FM signal that we are having at the input. So if this is passed through an ideal differentiator, the output would be the differentiated version of this signal, which is shown here. We take the time derivative. So the, the, what we have inside the bracket is the representation of an FM signal where this part represents the change in frequency that is dependent upon the signal, baseband signal M alpha. So when we differentiate this, the output is equal to uh, this part is multiplied by the, so instead of a uh, cause, we will get a minus sign uh, here, so this minus has been that, that appears here has been removed by using minus pi by using the trigonometric identity. So we'll not have any minus here. Rest the terms that are inside of this uh, that are having this time t being multiplied with them now appear at the output uh, amplitude. So we can see here 
apart from A, we have omega C plus KFMT. So instead of this integration, when we take the derivative of this term, we are left with the actual MT. So uh, if we look at this signal after differentiation, it looks, it resembles an AM signal, uh, like it resembles a full AM signal. So we have uh, the signal MT, which is baseband signal being multiplied with a carrier. Plus, there is another term, omega C, which is uh, the high frequency carrier that also appears, and it's a constant term. So, because of this appearance of this constant, this signal, this complete signal becomes a full AM signal. And so, if it's a full AM signal, we can now simply uh, detect the variations in the amplitude by using an envelope detector. We can retrieve our signal MT by using an envelope detector. The signal would look something like this. If MT is a, a sinusoidal signal, if so, the, the envelope here is represented by this expression. What we have inside is the variations, uh, the carrier variations, these that are dependent upon the uh, amplitude of the signal MT. So, uh, as you can see, there is no negative uh, part of these uh, fluctuations. So, that's why we can use simple envelope detection to get our signal. Uh, we can use envelope detection to obtain this expression. And in this expression is dependent upon MT, which is the baseband signal. So, that means we can simply get the demodulated signal MT. So, uh, there are some uh, points that we need to follow. So delta omega, the deviation, as we know, it's dependent upon AF multiplied by the maximum uh, amplitude in the baseband signal. So this deviation must be small than, um, it, it's always smaller than omega C because omega C is in megahertz, let's say 90 uh, megahertz. And this delta omega is in kilohertz, or so it's lesser than the carrier frequency, definitely. So the sum omega C plus K F M T would always be greater than zero. And that's why we have a full AM signal here. And so we can use envelope detection to detect our uh, signal M T. So in simple words, the, in, in the form of a block diagram, if this is the received signal, we take the time derivative, we get this derivative at the output, and then we use envelope detection to get this output, right? So it's important that the amplitude of the incoming FM signal is constant, because if it's not constant, then if it's time varying, so due to derivative, we will have a term dA by dt. Which will in, which will cause some distortions in the output. So if this term is time varying, we our output would not be dependent upon MT only. It would also depend upon variations of AP, which is an undesired effect. So even if this term were neglected, the envelope of uh, the derivative of FM would have these terms, right? So AT would exist. And so the output would now depend upon MT, AT instead of MT only, which is the baseband signal. So that will lead to distortions. So we need to have a mechanism at this point to limit the amplitude of AT to make it constant, right? So what are, how do we uh, implement practical frequency demodulators? So we just need to have a circuit that has a linear frequency response. Um, as we saw in the previous slide. So this is the correct response. Uh, differentiator is only one way to convert frequency variation of FM signals into amplitude variations that subsequently can be detected by means of envelope detectors. We can use operational amplifier-based differentiators at the receiver, or um, on the other hand, the role of differentiator can be replaced by any linear system whose frequency response contains a linear segment of positive slope. So since we are, we need to have a positive slope, this technique is called slope detection as well. So one such circuit is shown here. We have the RC circuit. It's a high pass amplifier uh, because it, sorry, it's a high pass filter. So it allows all the high frequencies. 
this region within the filter response is fairly linear and this can be used uh, so with increasing frequency the output is increasing proportionally so this can be used to imp uh, to implement that uh, slope detection scheme which we have discussed uh, previously so uh, this is the transfer function of the rc high pass filter this can be obtained by considering v out by v in where v out is equal to if we look at the circuit v out is equal to the voltage that appears across the resistor so it must be ir and then v in is equal to the voltage that appears across the sum of r and c so when we simplify when we substitute values of z for this circuit we will get this transfer function so in here for this transfer function if j2 pi fc is much much smaller than one so we can ignore it and when we ignore it the transfer function is directly proportional to 2 pi f r c so it's proportional to the frequency the output is proportional to the frequency and so we can use this for slope detection scheme right so this is uh, one uh, technique or one circuit another circuit is uh, we can also use a tuned RLC circuit. So let's say if we have tuned an RLC circuit to perform bandpass filtering, it's, uh, it has a resonance frequency of, let's say, omega naught, then this region is fairly uh, linear. We can use it to apply, uh, this, so we can use it to apply the slope detection technique and to get the desired output. So uh, in the receiver, this condition needs to be satisfied that omega C, which is the center frequency, let's say somewhere here, center frequency of the FM signal must be less than omega naught so that the uh, deviations from the center frequency are located on the linear region. So this condition must be satisfied. Omega naught is the resonance frequency of the circuit, which we know can, is obtained by 1 over under root LC. Uh, 